the Anycubic Photo Mono SE. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, Anycubic have been kind enough to send me their Mono SE and when it comes to styling it's already won me over. It arrived well packaged and fully assembled except for the build plate and this doorknob. The side panels are UV resistant clear yellow but inside they're fitted with removable opaque panels which help prevent UV rays ruining a print. Personally I like this look and I'll be keeping these panels in place. I've never personally favoured hinge covers as I'll explain further in a moment but many love them and the original Photon owners will love this. It's a return to a metal exterior. Whilst obviously flexible, the door is nowhere near as flimsy as the Photon S's plastic cover. Inside we see a tribute to quality metallic engineering. There's the drive screw, nicely distanced dual linear rails for increased stability and I'm guessing these are carbon air filters to help reduce resin odours. Of course the big news inside is the new 2K monochrome screen which also hides a new lighting matrix that, any cubic tell me, allows for a more uniform light exposure and better heat dissipation. What it should mean is a nice reduction in printing time. I'm delighted to see both the power switch and the USB port on the right side of the printer which is my preferred location as it's a much more user convenient spot. The rear holds a vented access panel should maintenance ever be an issue and the power supply socket. I'm also pleased to see that the Wi-Fi antenna has been situated here on the outside. In my review of the Mono X, I mentioned my disappointment at a location too close to resin spills for my comfort. But here on the SE, that's not a problem. So, if you hadn't guessed, that means the Mono SE has Wi-Fi capabilities which I won't cover in any great detail in this video as it's exactly the same phone app that's used on the Mono X. So look to that video if you need any Wi-Fi help. But as with the Mono X, it would be nice to see an Ethernet port here giving folks the option of Wi-Fi or a network cable. The left side of the printer holds yet another access panel Let's hope any cubic aren't trying to tell us something here. The build plate is well engineered and a quick check with a steel edge shows me that it's perfectly flat. The plate is loosened by a single grub screw which is okay but personally I prefer the larger hex bolts that Eligo have switched to using as these are much less fiddly. The resin tray is again made of metal and I'm delighted to see a max level indicator now in place. This is something I was critical of on my Photon S review so it's great to see any cubic listening to their customers. The menu is available via this 3.5 inch colour touchscreen with a user interface that has the same large text we first saw on the Photon S and as someone without the world's best eyesight, I love to see this, no pun intended. Nice big clear buttons. Leveling is the easy paper affair. Loosen the plate and you'll note that I'm doing this outside of the enclosure thanks to my meaty fingers, then screw it in place. Place an ordinary piece of paper, or the one any cubic provided, across the screen. Press the home button. Once the plate has fully descended, roughly straighten its position. Then press lightly but firmly downwards to ensure it's flat against the screen before tightening the fiddly grub screw. 
And this, folks, is why I personally don't favour hinged doors, but prefer a fully removable top. If you have the hands of a Japanese schoolgirl, you'll be fine. But fitting my hands inside these tight spaces is a bit of a pain. When it's done, simply click the Z equals zero button and leveling is finished. The leveling instructions, together with a pretty good user manual, can be found on the USB stick. You'll also find the test print file, so let's give that a go. Anycubic have kindly sent me this black resin to try. Now that's why we want a max level indicator. Plate addition is excellent. After a clean and a UV cure, I like the print, but the resin leaves me underwhelmed. The colour change gives the print a patchy look. Actually, after a few runs, the basket of my Anycubic Wash and Cure seems to have attracted string-like deposits. Obviously it's the resin, not the printer, that's causing this, but you have to say, it's strange stuff. Also on the USB stick is this, the RERF file, which stands for Resin Exposure Range Finder. Now this is an excellent idea. What any cubic have given us here is a way to fine tune the resin settings. It's not the first time I've seen this. There's been similar projects available for the Photon on GitHub for a while. But it's great to see Anycubic themselves providing us with a usable file. Unfortunately, I don't think it's the best design test I've seen. There's eight separate areas here, each which has a different level of exposure and they're marked with a number to identify each area. The problem is, they all have the number 5 on top. Don't. And their proper number is hidden under this tab, which is frankly stupid. The idea is to study the range of under and overexposed prints and choose a happy medium. Too much one way or the other will spoil the print. It's a great idea, but it has issues. I tried to alter the range, and for some reason, this killed my file completely. It just won't print anymore. I needed to contact Eddie Cubic and ask for another copy. But I love the concept, so here's an idea for you, Eddie Cubic. Why not incorporate this brilliant concept into the Photon Workshop? That way, it can be used on any of the Anycubic printers and we can test a wider range of resins. I stuck with one and a half seconds for this black resin. It seemed to work well enough, but just for the record, note that I don't have the anti-aliasing feature turned on. The standard Amerilabs town print is very impressive if we ignore the patchy resin. There's some excellent definition here though the clean break suggests that I've knocked the top off the tower during cleaning. So let's do some more test prints. I wanted a nice jewellery test piece, and I found this excellent ring on Thingiverse that's packed with detail. To make life easy for my fellow resin heads, I've remixed the file a little, shaving down a few overhangs to prevent inclusions, and adding a raft and supports for ease. That means this ring file is ready to go. I've shared it on Thingiverse, along with my thanks to the original artist. Well, that looks rubbish. There's actually a nice print here, but it's hidden by this patchy black resin. Ah, that's better. Now we can see the skill that went into this design, together with a very sharp print. For my mind, that's definitely a jewellery standard print. 
my buddies at Archvillain Games have shared this month's patron models with me. And what a choice of prints there are. I went with these 32mm minis, which again underwhelm thanks to the resin. But not so much now. Very nice. Arch villains also produced this monster. Look at that face. That's a face only my late father-in-law could have loved. And after a little glue, and then some grey primer. Wow, he's amazing. I will say he's not a very high detail print, but the Mono SE does a good job nonetheless. Many a model painter would be thrilled to have access to this. So what do I think of the Anycubic Photon Mono SE? I like it. It's a quality printer. It has a very metallic construction, with rigidity that should lend itself to smooth, accurate prints, furthered no doubt by the dual linear rails. The 2K monochrome screen with new lighting array should give us faster printing due to the reduction in resin exposure times. And completing a model of this complexity in a day, albeit a long day, is very impressive and a big bonus to printing fans. There's carbon filters for those that suffer the problems of pongs. And there's clear attention to customer convenience when we look at the switch and socket locations together with a larger than average menu display. Even the max level indicator and the relocated Wi-Fi antenna show a clear willingness to adapt and improve, which is all to the credit of any cubic. The Wi-Fi is a nice touch, but I still prefer hardwiring over Wi-Fi. And, genuinely, I prefer a USB stick over an Ethernet cable. You get no interruptions or loss of signal from a USB stick. But an Ethernet port would be a nice additional extra for those that don't favour Wi-Fi. The enclosure is too enclosed for my hands. However, I know some folks love the hinge tops, so I won't moan about that too much. In fact, I'll defend their position with this. Hey, any cubic, look at the frozen Sonic 4K lid. That's hinged, but it gives so much more access to the interior. Why don't you do a similar design? And that's about it. The Mono SE hasn't really given me anything to grumble about. It's a quality printer without any real drawbacks that I can see. However, it's not really a massive upgrade on the Photon S. In fact, on paper, they're pretty evenly matched. So, unless speed and metal are of major importance to you, I certainly wouldn't advise current Photon S owners to jump ship and buy this model, as I don't feel there's enough of a difference to justify the spend. I really wish any cubic had slipped in a 4K mono screen here, because that would have made a massive difference. But I've no doubt those boffins at any cubic are already beavering away on that concept. So, is the Mono SE a good printer, capable of producing quality, good definition prints? Yes, without a doubt. It deserves its place in the market and any cubic fans won't feel let down at all. And that wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed this review guys. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop me a line. So that's it for now. Take care, and thanks for watching.